Welcome back to tutorial number two. While we are building the school management system in VB.net, and in, th in this tutorial, we are going to start on our project. So, I have prepared a document I'm going to be following, and I will be providing you with this document in the, de in the description at the end of the tutorial. So, let me go ahead and open the document. As you are seeing, we are going to be building a school management system in VB.net and Crystal Reports. And this system is going to be having four modules in total. The first module will be the student's admission module. And the second module will be the school accounts module. The third will be the report card generation module and that will contain the grading system so automatically the system will grade and generate the report cards for the students the report cards will bear passport photos for each student and module number four will be the bulk sms module and this one will be used by the school bursa to sms the parents concerning the school fees payments so let us go ahead and see what is next so we are going to start by creating our new project but before that step number one is telling us to start up our database server for my case i am using zamp you can be using WAMP or any other server. Go ahead and start up your server. So this is my WAMP server. I have already started the services I need. That is Apache and my SQL. So after starting up the server, you go ahead and open up PHP my admin. Just open up your browser and type this address HTTP localhost forward slash PHP my admin. So let us open up the browser and type http and automatically this is my panel for php my admin and we are going to go ahead in step number two as you are seeing we are going to create a new database and call it free school management so let me get this database name you click on databases then you provide your database name my database name is going to be free school underscore management then you click on create automatically my database has been created as you are seeing but it is throwing a warning that no tables found in the database in the next step as you are seeing Step number three is telling us to create a new table inside our database and call it login. And it should be having the following fields ID, username, password, and user type. So there are four fields. So let me go ahead and create this table and call it login. There are four fields. You click on go. And the first field was our ID, the second one was the user name the third one was the password and the field number four is the user type so this one was an integer user type okay that is okay so all these other fields they are variable character so for the integer let me give it 11 characters and for the username let me take 40 characters the password let me give it 100 characters and the user type let me give it 20 characters then for the id i'm going to make it to be the primary key do not forget that 
so it's going to be a primary key and at the same time i want it to auto increment so the id will be auto incrementing after doing that just go ahead and click on save so now once you click on save automatically our our database table has been created with four fields so now let us see the next step the next step is to open visual studio you are free to use the version any version you want you can use visual studio 2019 but for me i am using visual studio 2010 go ahead and open up any version of your choice you have so let me launch visual studio and after launching visual studio i'm going to create a new project you click on file and you you say new project and for your project you make you, you make sure the language is visual basic and you choose windows form application so the name of the application let me give it school school management and the dot, the .NET framework i am using it is 4.0 you can go ahead and choose any .NET framework you want then you click on ok and by default automatically the the ide will create for you a starting form that is form one and in our procedure as you are saying we are going to rename form one to fm main so you go ahead and rename this so i'm going to rename form one to fm main this is going to be our main form in the project and as you are seeing i have changed the name of the form and we can change also the label just click on the form and you get the text property then let us say school school management so that is we have changed the caption on our form and for the next step create another form and give it a name login and also we are going to create a third form and we call it main as we shall see so to create a new form you can click on your project name right click and say add new item and i'm going to add a windows form so for the name as i told you let us give it login now we are having two forms and also you go ahead and create another form and call it main so after creating those forms now the next procedure let us first go back to, to form f1 fm main and on fm main you are going to create three items from the toolbox you are going to get a timer place on the form a progress bar and a label so let us go ahead and do that you just click on the toolbox you get a timer so you look for a timer you drag and drop it on the on the on the window then you also look for a progress bar so let me look for a progress bar a progress bar you place it on your form so this is going to be our progress bar and 
And lastly, we are going to get a label. You get a label from the toolbox. You drag and drop it on your form. And let me change some of the properties of this label. You just go to the properties and click on font. So for the font, I'm going to give it bold and I give it a bigger font. Let me give it 18. Yeah, as you are seeing, and I'm going to change the four color to red. So after doing that, we shall get a logo for our system and place it here. But for now, let us first go with that. Now you are going to double click on the timer and get this code. You place it in the coding window for the timer. So once you double click on the timer, automatically it should take you to the coding window for its event. So you double click on the timer and as you are seeing, I am the sub timer one tick. So just get that code, put it there. I'm going to explain this code. <coughs> and also, let us see what is next. Just get this code here label one dot text is equal to empty strings and timer one dot start and come back to your form this time double click on the form the, on, on the form itself on the top it will take you to the form load event of that form so the form load event here in vb this one will work like you see a constructor so everything you want to initialize as soon as the as soon as the form loads you must put it inside the form load event so what i am saying here that when i run my program as soon as the form loads get label one set its text to empty and then start the timer and as you are seeing once we start the timer in the event to start the timer, as you are seeing, we are declaring, we are saying progress bar one. Remember, we have placed our progress bar on the form. As you are seeing, it's progress bar one. And the name of this one is label one by default. You can go ahead and change those names, but don't, do not forget to edit this code. So I am saying, once the timer gets started, the progress bar should be visible to the user and I am setting the initial value of the progress bar to one because by default before starting the progress bar its initial value is zero so now I am setting it to one and now I am saying if the progress bar value reaches two before starting it is zero now making it to true we are having a value of one so let us go ahead here click on the progress bar and give it an initial value before starting it it is zero so let us give it an initial value of one here in the properties after giving it an initial value of one let us go back to the code for now before starting the progressive bar, it is having value 1. Now we are getting the value 1 which is uh, the, uh, which the, pro the progress bar has and we are adding a new value which makes 2. So now we are making an if statement and we, s we are saying if progress bar value 1, no, no, no progress bar dot value is equal to 2 then we must set the text of the label and the text of the label must be equal to the value of the progress bar and we are joining a percentage sign and this string so we are we are incrementing the progress bar like that because the progress bar once you start it it will, it will increment automatically it will increment automatically until when it reaches a hundred percent so now wh when it reaches value five we are issuing this text you can you can go ahead and edit the text like that we are incrementing the progress bar until when 
it reaches 100. When the progress bar reaches 100, we want to, to, to disable the timer. And before we disable the timer, we are now launching the login form. And after that, disabling the timer, and we are hiding this code me.hide means that in VB, you, you we use me to, to reference the, the current form. So I am inside F M main. So I in Java you can say this dot fm main, but in VB you say fm main. You say me dot hide me me. Do, me will mean fm main because I am inside fm main. So let us run the code and see what it what it gives us. To run, just click on this start button, and as you are seeing, as you are seeing. The text keeps on changing the text of the progressive bar. After reaching 100, automatically we are issuing a new form, which is the login form. So, thanks for watching. This is the, intro, the, this is the introduction to our coding process. And in this tutorial, we have been able to, to make our splash screen all the starting form. And after loading a progress bar to 100%, we are issuing or loading the login form. So in the next tutorial, we shall be working on the login form with all its functionality. We shall be creating the form fields and linking them to the database. And we shall be continuing from there. So thanks for watching. Let's meet in the next tutorial.